Hello everyone, this is Julia. So today I want to talk a little bit about drawing with dip nibs. And as you might know, dip nibs are widely used for calligraphy these days. And they are these flexible steel nibs that will change the width of the line if you apply pressure on them. But they're also very widely used for drawing and actually some of these nibs come from Japan where they are used to draw manga comics. So, And then there are other nibs that are more of the historic kind of nibs that were used in past centuries to draw maps and these kind of things. And today I want to show you a little bit about which nibs I use in my drawings and my illustrations and tell you the differences and how to select nibs and that kind of stuff. So in general uh, you'll have to decide what kind of line basically you want to draw and um, there are nibs that give you a great selection. For example these kind of nibs I already talked about they're used for manga drawing. They're called G nibs, and there are a few different kinds. I believe this here is a Nico G, this here is a Zebra G. I really like them for drawing, and I'll just demonstrate with a little bit of Sumi ink. And yes, you'll have to dip in the nib quite a few times if you draw with a dip nib, hence the name. And um, yeah, these are kind of flexible, so they can give you a fairly thin line or, or a modulated line, which you can see here. If I apply pressure, then the nib changes its, its aperture, so to say. It's, it opens up and you can have pretty thick lines that way. And of course, that can make a lot of sense in your drawing when you want to show maybe a shadow part or something where a thick line is appropriate. So um, as you can see I have this open ink container here but you can also use these little ink containers which are called dinky dips and these are primarily sold, I think, for calligraphy, but they're also very nice for drawing. You just fill in the ink in these little containers and then you have them besides your, your desk. So, <clears throat> as you can see, these manga nibs, these G nibs, have very... flexible kind of way to draw and you can draw a lot of different lines with these and this is probably the, the thickest stroke that I can have but it's already pretty pretty fat so beautiful stroke and I'm using I'm also using kind of thick paper here so that it won't come come through on on the next page. So yeah, these are the G nibs which which I like very much. And if you want to take a break or put the nib aside like I want to do now, then you'll have to be prepared and have a little bit of water near your desk. And I'll just fetch this. So if you would so if you want to take a break, then you'll have to clean your nib because this kind of ink, this Sumi ink or India drawing ink, will stick to the nib and clog it. So you'll have to swipe it a few times in water and then wipe it clean and wipe it dry with a soft cloth. So you may want to do this a few times until you're certain that all the ink is removed from from the tines and the important part is the the top of the nib here it will you will notice that usually it will run 
into the base and these are the parts where the nib will rust after a while but if you clean the top then you should be fine for for a long while and usually the, the if you use these nibs for drawing they will last a lot longer than if you use them for writing so all right that's that and i just wanted to show you some some other nibs that you can use so We have here a kind of a smaller nib. I think it's a, a basic drawing nib by Leonard, no, by Hero. And um, these are, it says, it says 6H, so it's similar to what you would have on pencils. And um, it's sort of a nib that's non flexible. So I'll just quickly demonstrate. The kind of lines that you can make with this nib. So these are very thin lines. If I don't apply any pressure at all you can see so really really thin. And these are the kind of nibs that can be used for really thin cross hatchings. You can see that here. And these are really not as flexible as the G-nibs. You can see they have a little bit of flexibility, so I can modulate my line with this pretty nicely. And But they have their limitations. And this is also a very small nib, so you have to dip in quite often with this. But again, You can see that you can do really nice lines with this kind of nib. And I'm not really doing a drawing here, which I would have liked. I already have put some some subjects um, back there, but um, yeah, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to talk and draw and do all these things these things at the same time so so this is the 6h drawing nib which is more for really fine and, and delicate work and then we have this i think it's a browser nib it's the browser zito fine which is a really fine nib i'm not sure if i've used this so Usually, if you use a nib for the first time, you'll have to prepare it with a bit of rubbing alcohol. So what you would do is you take the nib and put it either put it into the nib holder or just take it at the base. And then you would put it into the alcohol, swipe it a few times and um, then wipe it dry. And what this does is it removes the coating of the nib that is applied in the factory. And if you don't do this, it will prevent the, the ink to um, run off the nib in a continual, continuous fashion. So what I do here, I have my alcohol here and I just immerse the nib in this. And then I rub it off. And if you've done this a few times, then your nib is ready to write so or ready to to draw <laughs> so this would be the cito or cito and you can see that i'm not applying any pressure here so this has a little bit thicker hairlines than the other nibs and if i apply pressure then nothing much really happens so This is a nib that gives nice continuous results but doesn't have a lot of flexibility. So you would you could use this if you have drawings that you want to scan and you want to have the lines really show in the scan. So this can be great if you have to digitize your work. And as you can see it can give really nice and fresh lines and 
also really dense cross hatches. So yeah, another great nib that I really like to use regularly. As always, you have to clean it if you make a pause or stop using it. So that's what I'm doing here too. And if you take good care of your nibs, you can use them for quite a while. So what do we have here? I think, ah, that's another one. This is the browser EF66, which is another really small nib, but this one is a really flexible nib too. And it's really lovely for calligraphy work, but it's also great for, for drawing. So I'll just very quickly demonstrate what this one does. And it's sometimes, the downside to this nib is sometimes it's a bit hard to get started. So what you would do is make a little point. So it might be a little bit impractical for drawing, but you can see once the ink is flowing, then it's easier to get this one started. And one of the properties of this nib is that it has, it's really, really flexible. So you can see the kind of lines that I do here. It's really dramatic. And I will leave to you what kind of drawing you would make with this nib, but you can see that you can really achieve very nice effects with, with this. So, and it also makes a really nice sound. That's the one thing about nibs is that they really, they're really scratchy and they're really different from, from liners or from, from pens in that regard. So they really make, make a little bit of noise when you, when you draw. And as you can see, it has problems to get started, but once the ink is flowing, then you can do these nice little cross hatches with it. And sometimes what I do is use these nibs for lettering or calligraphy and for drawing when I'm working on a piece where the two things are combined. And this makes for a really nice continuity in this stroke. And that's something that, that I really like to do in my work. And as you can see, you can achieve all kinds of different effects. It's like little raindrops or feathers or whatever you want to, to simulate. And uh, all right. So again, I'm cleaning the nib. Oh yeah, another thing that I wanted to show you is, well, you already have seen the kinds of different lines that you can do. There are simply straight lines. And this is something that needs to be practiced for a little bit, drawing straight lines with a nib. You simply, you try to hold it loose, but lock your hand and then just pull your hand across the page for simple straight lines and the less pressure you apply the thinner the lines will be so that's a technique that needs to be practiced for a while but see you can achieve really thin lines with fountain pen uh, with dip nib pens like this and I already demonstrated how you can do cross hatching and usually that's what indicates a shadow when you draw and um, yeah the modulated strokes you already saw they're drawn by modulating the pressure while you're drawing the line. So should have taken different nibs 
to demonstrate this. It's a, a little bit finicky. All right, um, modulated lines. You would start with no pressure, then you now I'm applying a little bit more pressure and I'm just trying to apply no pressure at all at the end. So sometimes what what helps these nibs getting started is putting just the tip in a little bit of water so that the tip merely just kisses the water and then the ink will flow a little bit better, as you can see. All right, and another nice technique that I use quite often is just to make these little dots or little stipples. And um, if you scan your image, your drawing, then it's usually nicer to use a nib like this one, which I showed earlier, which has a little bit, it's a little bit softer and it also gives um, bigger, bigger dots, bigger stipples. And that way you can add texture or indicate shadows to your drawing. So yeah, that's another way to to add something to your drawing so i already said that you'll have to clean these after you use them to prevent um, ink clogging up on the nib and uh, basically rusting of the nib and um, yeah you you clean them in water and wipe them dry with a soft cloth or let them dry in the air. But I usually wipe them dry and um, store them again because it's a little bit easier and, and quicker. And um, you shouldn't use anything too abrasive to, to scrub them or really to, this could break the nib. So um, what you could use is um, dishwasher soap or a really gentle soap that you could use for your hands and rub the nib with a little toothbrush until you feel that it's dry and then again swipe it in a little bit of water and um, wipe it dry with a cloth. So another thing that I wanted to show you very quickly because the video is getting quite long I think is how I store my nibs and I get these little plastic containers if you can see this So I have these little plastic containers and which with these little compartments and you can store quite a lot of nibs this way and um, I usually um, have different brands in different compartments and well you can do this any way you want but you can see that this way it's a little bit more organized than if you would toss them all in, in the same box. So yeah, another thing about nibs is then that when they appear to be bent or the tines don't close anymore or they're, they're, the tines are out of shape, then it's usually time to discard the nib because if these tines don't close to a point at the tip anymore, then you won't be able to, to draw a nice line or to write with these. So you'll usually notice this if the nib behaves a little bit wonky or if the tines are, are too far apart and won't close anymore then you'll simply have to toss it and take out a new one and that's just the way it is with these nibs. There are uh, materials that you'll have to replace after a while like with brushes. So yeah, um, one last thing, another great tip that I received recently from a viewer was um, he had a lot of, of rusty nibs and he said they basically looked good and they, they worked and I wasn't really sure what to tell him because once nibs are rusty you don't really get the rust off and I told him he could try with a few gentle methods but I, I wouldn't really know what would help with the rust and as long as he could write with them that's fine and then he um, 
came back to me after a while and um, after a few weeks and told me that he had tried um, a rust removal um, liquid and um, this is actually something that would, you would use when you do stuff at home like do it yourself stuff and um, this is it's called WD40 and I just wanted to tell you that this is awesome if you have I don't know squeaky doors and it's basically a kind of oil that you apply to to all kinds of metal surfaces and it removes the rust and makes them I don't know it makes them smooth and move again and so he applied it to his nip and he said it worked perfectly and the rust set as so I, I think 80% of the rust were gone gone and he could use write with them again and so that's a really cool tip and I want to thank you again for this and I have yet to try it because I don't have many rusty nips right now but it's it's definitely a great tip so try it out if you want. So yeah this is all for today. If you like this video then please like and subscribe to my channel and um, don't forget to tell me what you'd like to to hear about more or to learn about. Um, just leave me a comment below and um, yeah, whatever you, you think you might be interested in, something about drawing or more um, working with nibs and yeah, anything that might, might be interesting for you. So thank you very much for watching and bye bye.